Okay, this is my morning's br morning brief for uh, Friday, and uh, we'll make go go through this real quick. Like, uh, watch rattling the markets today. That is the trade war with China this morning. Uh, you got the uh, U.S. imposing uh, stiffer restrictions on Yahweh chips uh, and the, on the uh, license agreements with the suppliers. So uh, that is rattling the market. China is coming back overnight with antitrust. Uh, regulation on their uh, 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 companies, uh, especially Tencent, and uh, Tencent got hammered overnight over that. I think it's in response to the U.S. and what they were doing. So anything related to China is getting hit, like Tesla, JD, uh, a lot of those are getting hit today. Uh, Novavax had even stronger results came out for the uh, use of their vaccine. Uh, so they got they were up at 1.20 percent this morning. Uh, great results imposed on them this morning. 8:30 this morning we have uh, PPI hitting in the markets. That's a purchaser's price index. Inflationary data is likely. Uh, so uh, in in lieu of that coming in, we got bonds crashing this morning. I got that up on my chart here at 8:30. So we'll see what happens if the price indexes are up a lot higher, uh, which they should be. Uh, obviously, the bonds are selling off in lieu of that, okay? Uh, consumer sentiment, uh, you're not seeing the daily. I've got the weekly here, so you're not seeing the morning action yet, so just give me one second here. Uh, consumer sentiment, it's at 10 o'clock this morning. Should be really good, okay? Uh, and then upgrades and downgrades, we got BP and uh, Val. Val. Uh, they got downgraded. Uh, Val is a steel supplier out of uh, Brazil. Uh, you got Uber upgraded. Uh, Ultra had a really good earnings. Ultra Salon, so I haven't. I'll pull that up here in a minute. And they got a new CEO coming in. They announced that. Okay, and we'll start with that. Uh, basically, I'm going to get my weekly rundown real quick on these the ends. I have not done that yet in my videos. And basically, what I am seeing here with our bonds, we have not bottomed yet, in my opinion. We are right here at critical support. Uh, see how the volume profile builds out right here. Uh, this is where your support is down here, in my opinion. Okay, this is broken. This was the uh, exhaustive move up. So now this right here, we've been basing here for a little bit, but I do think we're coming down into this area on our 10-year bonds. So that means yields are going higher above 1.6%, if that's the case. Uh, you, I haven't been showing this. Uh, and the problem is also on the longer end of the curve, if you're using a simple moving average, uh, you know, uh, you've got a much flatter 200-day uh, moving average on your longer end of the curve. But uh, we do seem to be breaking below our 200-day moving average on our 30-year as well. So our yields are spiking pretty good there. Similar situation, the black line suggests where uh, they're going to find support. That will be our near support. That'd be 152.23. So you're looking... Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, basically... Uh, four more basis points down. So that'll put us about 164%, uh, percent, one point, yeah, 1.64% 1 on yield, somewhere in that in that range. Yeah, I think that's about right. I think that's how the math works out on the 30 years. So it uh, gives you some idea. I do not think bonds have bottomed out here. Now, if you go back on our daily charts, your one hour charts here, this is the one I typically show you guys. And as you can see, we are just crashing down here uh, this morning. Uh, in lieu of the PPI, the inflation data out of the PPI. That is your most leading indicator of inflation. Uh, some of these, uh, 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 CPI is more of a historical. Uh, so PPI is your most aggressive read on inflation, and that's hitting at 8.30 this morning, okay? So just keep that in mind going into today's session. Okay. Things I am looking at here. SPY, we have achieved target upside target on our spy into the close yesterday we we got to what the highest expectations for the week um go uh, <clears throat> yesterday amazing run up and uh, so now we'll see what happens here going forward uh so i do want to point that out we're get, we got a rejection we're even further down this morning on our spies as the markets are coming in pretty hard here this morning so i do want to point that out uh this is our critical support way down here uh you know uh but we have actually achieved our goal already. So this is not nearly as important. So uh, very, very good chance that we can roll back over here. 
Uh, now, if I come over here and I bring my uh, zoom, maximize this real quick, and basically open interest that expired today. It is in the best interest to keep a uh, spy under 390 today. Okay, we're at 391 right now, in my opinion, because that way uh, anybody who wrote options, uh, who so who sold covered calls, they get paid for uh, uh, option writers will be paid for any calls uh, uh, if they can keep the strike price under 390 for today. So that is a headwind going in on SPY into today's session, in my opinion. Okay, my next chart, NDX, uh, that's your NASDAQ 100. We did achieve target as well, and uh, but a little, it was, it was just barely got into target, okay? So it was showing a little bit more relative weakness, believe it or not, uh, in regards to this week's chart, or into uh, upside targets. Um, and uh, so, yeah, very amazing run here on the NASDAQ, but we are into our target range. Uh, way down here, uh, the target was going to be valid all the way down to the 12,381. We didn't even come back in at all, so uh, these upside targets. I'm not saying that since we've achieved this, we're coming back in. I'm just saying these are targets that uh, were uh, going out. Uh, that's where price should migrate, should have migrate in a bullish tape which we've already achieved all these targets. Uh, so I do want to point that out. Okay, uh, another thing on the queues expiring today. Uh, 312 are uh, the puts, uh, very high open interest. Uh, well, basically uh, 309, uh, 310s. The 310 puts got some high open interest here on uh, the queues. So I can see them trying to hold the queues above 310 uh, today. And that is actually lines up with my channel low on uh, the queues. So we can still come in her, uh, considerably lower here on the queues here. Uh, another two points lower, three points lower here on the queues. And still manage to uh, put this high open interest uh, on the put side out of the money for today's session. So, you know, uh, like I said, that goes in line with uh, as a spy in that regard um this is a potential bounce point on the queues though i do want to point that out uh right here right now we we had an untested virgin point uh volume point of control and uh, we just managed in a pre-market here to come down and tag that and we're getting an initial bounce off that right here right now so i do want to point that out uh and then if we can also keep under uh what was it uh 315 so uh I can see them trying to keep because that high open interest on uh, the call side. So if they can just keep it pinned right here, uh, that would be the best scenario for any option writers uh, to get paid on both sides of the equation. So basically, um, I'm not, I don't know what's going to happen today, but uh, that is a scenario I am putting out there. Trying, they're going to try to pin it under 315 and above 310. So just keep that in mind in today's session. Okay, the Russell, uh, as you can tell, uh, bonds are collapsing this morning, so Russell may actually blow through our uh, uh, expected, uh, this was our expected uh, range for the Russell. Looks like we're going to range highs today, uh, given the uh, very strong uh, bond thing, depending on PPI today. If that PPI uh, does disappoint, then of course the, the uh, yields will come back in in today's session. But we have achieved uh, upside targets already in our Russell. And uh, way down here, the 21.28 would, would reassess, um, you know, the, these upside moves. But, yeah, we've already achieved it all. So it doesn't, it's, that's a little mute, mute, mute point at this point. So um, I just want to keep that in mind. And if you come over here on our options, open interest, uh, give me a second here. I got to zoom this. Didn't realize it was small. Whoops. There you go. Uh, so the option riders here, uh, so basically, uh, um, the biggest pain right here, because you got this little blip here on the call side, so some downside action in the Russell would cause, uh, the most pain to option holders. I'm not saying that's going to happen, uh, but, you know, you got a lot of open interest in the money, uh, on the, uh, calls side, okay, and the calls, they could bring... 
they bring IWM back in, that's where the, the bigger pain is for today, uh, technically. Uh, I'm not saying they can or they will. I'm just saying uh, for option riders, you want Russell to come in today, okay? Quick look at what's happening this morning as far as volume goes. Uh, we got $2 million here in Sundial. Uh, Sundial Growers reports next week. Uh, I think that is a uh, cannabis play. They are reporting next week. A lot of volume in that. They, that has been hot all week long. A lot of action uh, in that. Uh, the UVXY is catching a bid this morning. Or, uh, Inverse Tech, a lot of volume. 1.7 million shares this morning on the Inverse Tech. Uh, the very This is a very hot uh, asset right now with uh, tech uh, being as volatile it is, as it is right now. So just keep that one in watch. And then these China names, Neo, uh, Tesla, uh, you know, JD, uh, they're all get taken on the chin in the overnight session. You're down over 2% in the Shanghai Composite la last night, given the news and stuff. And then Lee Automotive, that's China as well. Uh, JD's taking a big, big hit, like I said. Uh, Apple's uh, got quite a bit of China exposure as well, so keep that one in, on watch. These companies with Chinese exposure, uh, China depend or Apple really depends on a robust Chinese sales, so that thing there can be underwater as well in that regard. Uh, we had an afternoon rally in Tilray, and they're giving that all back this afternoon. So keep that, or this morning at this. And NEO had a really nice day yesterday as well. Uh, I was calling that out pre-market yesterday, and I kicked myself for not taking it. Uh, that was uh, 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 more than the double uh, on that one, if anybody would have gotten NEO at the open yesterday. and But they're they taking it, bringing it back in as well this morning. So basically everything is down because of the massive move yesterday and they're bringing things back in here. But I think it has more to do with the bonds and then the China news. It's a reason to take profits and to uh, uh, punish, penalize some of these, uh, uh, all these option holders to the bullish side. Uh, it's a good, good time to take some profits off the table, I think. And it's really not uh, devastating if they do so. Uh, one final thing I always look at, you only got 309000 on this a pretty significant sell-off in the queues here, so I do want to point that out. Uh, very, that's fairly low volume on our queues, so it, the, it suggests to me there's it's still a, likely, a decent likelihood of a bounce in our tech today, so I do want to point that out. Uh, I'm really only getting two things over 100,000 shares here. Spy's not even getting 100,000 shares at, five, at 6 o'clock in the morning, so... Very light uh, volume here on SPY and or the 24-hour uh, trading uh, ETS. Okay, some things I want to look at here. Come uh, Tuesday, Jable is reporting. Tuesday, I don't know if there was news out or not. I didn't hear it on the tape. I did want to point go through some of these names. Uh, InBev is reporting next next Tuesday. That's another one. So keep this one on watch going into next week's. Uh, Wednesday, uh, Tuesday after market, we got Crowdsource reporting. So keep that one on watch. That, was, that one has been on a tear here lately. Kodak, which is now becoming a major Cobra player, uh, it's reporting next week. Okay. And then Wednesday afternoon, we got Lennar reporting next week. William Sonoma. Reporting next week, and we have a, another one that's been seeing a lot of uh, option. I just mentioned a minute ago, Sandile, uh, Sundial, Growers, all kinds, of, and it's going into earnings next week. So that's one that could actually uh, rip your head off here before long. Uh, it looks like it's one to break out here, in my opinion. And then Thursday you have Dollar General in the morning. Uh, that one there looks like it could be a nice one. Uh, it's deeply uh, been sold off uh, into this earnings event. So, you know, we're still, uh, you know, it could easily see 195 going into those numbers next week on uh, Dollar General. Uh, CSIQ, uh, that's one of your solar names. This is another head and shoulders. Looks like we're breaking above uh, 
uh, this this is the left head right so you know uh, it's hard to tell what's happening here but it looks like a head and shoulders pattern uh, it's not really one that I want to chase but something to look at and then Thursday afternoon FedEx we started seeing action yesterday a lot of times you'll see Thursday into ne into the uh, next week for action positioning for the options FedEx, look at this. Uh, it looks like breaking out here on FedEx, knowing that next week we, uh, in a, uh, Thursday next week we have um, a uh, uh, earnings, earnings Thursday next week. And Nike also, I, I didn't see any Nike hitting, but look at this. Uh, wow, Nike, man, Nike might be going back to all-time highs into those numbers as a running earnings run-up play as well. So very. Uh, Looks uh, very constructive here on Nike as well. Um, and we had uh, Euro industrial production uh, uh, numbers. They all beat. They, they had solid industrial production this morning as well. So there you go. I'm uh, almost 16 minutes here. I'm going to call it a wrap on this video. Like the video if you like it. Please follow me on uh, Twitter, Gumby9662C. Uh, retweet it if you can. And then, uh, you know, uh, have any questions, leave comments at the bottom. I'm happy to get back with you, okay? Thanks a lot.